Welcome to Photo Play Paper. I'm Amy Sonneman and today I'd like to share with you the Folio 3. The Folio 3 is coming out just in time for holiday gift giving. This would make a perfect gift for grandparents, mom and dad, new parents, lots of baby pictures would fit inside of the Folio 3, and so much more. Today I want to share with you how to assemble it to make life a little bit easier so that all of the mistakes I made are mistakes that you don't have to make. So let's take a look at what you get inside of the Folio 3. When you open your package, the first thing I want you to do is find the magnets. And there's a little bag of magnets that look like this. I'm gonna have you set those magnets in a safe place. Set them aside, we're gonna use them at the very end, but they're kinda of tiny and they're really easy to get misplaced amongst all of the things that we'll be working with throughout the assembly of the Folio 3. This is what you'll be creating. When you open up this book, you're gonna have lots of spaces for photos, journaling, and so much more. So you're gonna have all of these cascading pages, like so. They're gonna go and stay sealed with a magnet. And then on this side, you're gonna lift up the flap and you're gonna have pages that fold out from the left and right instead of the top. So lots of space for all kinds of photos, journaling, ephemera, and so much more. I always find it super helpful to see what I'm going to create before I actually dig in and start creating, so hopefully that helps you as well. The first piece we're going to locate in our kit is the front cover. So we're going to find the front cover first. It is the largest piece in your set. So this is the cover and it's going to have two score lines in the middle. That will be the spine. There's also a score line on either side and then a piece in the corners that overlap. And what we're going to do is the steps show us to cut off the corners so that we can fold it and actually make our cover. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I took a ruler and a pencil and just made a pencil mark across the corner to be able to cut off the edge on each of these sides. So it's easier, you can get a straight line. So all four corners have a pencil line to cut on. Now we're going to go ahead and cut that corner off. When you're finished cutting the corners off, it'll look like this. What that allows you to do is fold in all of your edges once you add adhesive, like so. And that is the basis for your cover of your folio. So next we're going to go ahead and add our adhesive. Okay, so let's do that. So now that we have our adhesive on all four sides, and I used red adhesive so that you can see it easier in the video, but you can use the red line tape like I have, you can use tissue tape. I wouldn't use a tape runner just because I don't think it's gonna be strong enough to hold all of the pieces as we continue to build. Okay, so we have our tape on it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fold all of the pieces inward. Okay, like so. We're going to take our bone folder and we're just going to smooth out those lines. Like so. That allows your edges to be nice and crisp. All of the pieces fold down to make a nice mitered edge. And if your edges aren't perfect, it doesn't matter because there's gonna be an inner piece that gets glued on top. 
So if one side is longer than the other or one side is shorter than the other, don't stress about it because it's gonna get covered up anyway. You just need it to be nice and secure. Now we're gonna go ahead and take the backing off of our adhesive and just glue each of the sides down. Before we get too far into the video, I wanted to just kind of go over a little bit of terminology for score lines so that you know what I'm referring to when I talk about mountain and valley scores. I've tinted my valley and mountain scores blue so that you could see them a little bit easier. This is a valley score and this is a mountain score. A valley score has a divot in it so it's the when you score you're pressing down with your scoring tool and it's making this valley. When you rub your hand over it it's fairly smooth. That is a valley score. This is a mountain score. It's the back side of the scored piece of paper and when you run your hand over it it creates a mountain or a speed bump. So when you rub your hand over it, it actually does feel bumpy. When I refer to a mountain score or a valley score, this is what I'll be referring to. I will apologize ahead of time if I refer to a mountain fold as opposed to a mountain score or a valley score versus a mountain fold. Um, this is what I'm referring to. It's not, a, it's not a fold, it's just a score line. I share that with you so that you can see on white paper what I'm talking about. If you look at the outside of your folio, those are going to be the valley scores. Okay? When you run your finger across it, it's going to be smooth. If you flip it over, those are going to be your mountain scores. Okay? When you run your hand over those, you're going to feel the speed bump or the mountain bump. So we folded all of our pieces into the mountain bump. All right, we're going to do the same thing with the edges. There's two mountain bump score lines. We're going to fold it. Take our bone folder. Just give it a nice crease. We're going to fold the second side, do the same thing. And you've made your cover. So this will be the outside of your folio. So that completes step number three. Next we're going to go on to step number four. With step number four, you're going to go ahead and find the piece of paper that is the interior cover. It is the next largest piece in your kit. Okay, so it will look like this and it will have two score lines in the center. Those are going to get folded and this is going to be the inside of your folio. This will be the inside cover of your folio. When you place this on your table to add your adhesive, which is what we're going to do next, I want you to place your paper with the valley side up. So when you run your finger over the top of it, it's going to be smooth. If you have it the wrong way and you run your finger over it, you're going to feel two mountains or two speed bumps. You don't want the speed bumps, you want the smooth piece. So make sure it's nice and smooth. In step four, if you're following along with the directions, you're going to go ahead and take your adhesive and you're going to run strips along the outside, like this. I also need you to run adhesive on either side of the score line, which creates the spine, and this will be your spine. Okay, so go ahead and do that. For step five, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the cover that we just made it in the last step as well as the inside piece that we just added adhesive to. And what I want you to do is fold both of the pieces inward. And I kind of want you to make sure that, like you're folding a card, I want you to make sure that it's fairly straight on both sides, okay? So it will look like this when it's folded.
before we take any adhesive off at all, we're going to bring in the front cover. We're going to take the inside of the cover, and I just want you to see how it's going to go together. So we're going to put one on top of the other, and you're going to want it even from left to right, side to side here, and top to bottom. Just so you have it looking nice and it's covering up your corners. It just looks nice and finished. If you can see the two score lines from the inside and the outside piece, what you're going to do is line those two pieces up because that's what's going to help you find your center. You want these two pieces to be lined up perfectly so that when you add your adhesive, it's going to go down nice and smooth and square. Okay, so it's so when you fold it over, it's flat. So before you would remove any adhesive whatsoever, make sure everything is kind of in place. And I actually use a piece of removable tape so that it doesn't scooch. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my purple tape, just kind of secure it. We're just going to secure it a little bit on one side because we're only going to work with one side at a time. Once everything's lined up in the way you want it, then you're able to go ahead and peel off your adhesive. But what you want to do is peel off your center pieces first. So we're going to peel off the two center pieces once everything's lined up. Because this adhesive is super sticky and it's not going to go anywhere. So be sure that you have everything lined up and in place before you do this step. And I always double check that it's how I want it before I rub it down. So I've got the middle tucked down. Next I want to take the top and the bottom. So we're going to remove the bottom of the adhesive. Just kind of rub it right here for now. Then we're going to take the top of the adhesive and just kind of gently remove the top of the adhesive and rub the center. Before I take any other adhesive off, I just want to make sure that everything's lining up the way it should. If you're happy with that, you can go ahead and remove the inner piece closest to the spine on both sides. And then I'm going to remove the outside piece closest to the edge. And I'm just going to take it one side at a time, take my hand and roll it to the outside so that it's nice and smooth. It's the way I want it. We can go ahead and take our purple tape off because we don't need that anymore once the spine is in place. So I remove the red tape from the inside cover. We're going to do the same thing. We're just going to take our hand and we're going to roll it and rub it to the outside. When you're finished, you have your cover. Now to make sure that the cover moves freely, I'm just going to gently take my scoring tool, just kind of flatten those edges, and you have your cover. Super easy. Next we're going to move on to step six, and you're going to locate five pieces of paper. These are going to be used for waterfalls and each of the pieces are four and a quarter by six and three quarters, and they have one score line. They're gonna look like this. There will be five of them. As we work with them, we're gonna work with them one at a time, and we need to put adhesive on them. So we're going to face them all valley side up, okay? So valley side up, and we're going to adhere the red tape or whatever tape you're using to the valley side up. We're going to put it right above the score line. Let's go ahead and do that. 
When you're finished, you'll have five pieces that are four and a quarter by six and three quarters that look like this. And you're gonna have the tape on the valley side. So basically what you're gonna be doing is folding it backwards. So if your tape is at the top, you're gonna fold it backwards. Okay, so go ahead and do that with each of the pieces. Once you have each of the pieces folded, they'll look like this. These are gonna go on the left side of your inside cover. To give you an idea of what they'll look like, when you're finished, your waterfall will look like this. Perfect for adding photos and decoration, maybe a note. So let's start assembling the left side of your cover. So we folded our piece backwards. We're going to go ahead and we're going to line that piece up left to right evenly. So kind of take a look and see where you've got a little bit of even space on both sides. Once I get it where I want, I'm going to take my purple tape and I'm going to tape it in place at the bottom. I lined it up at the very top so it's flush to the top of our book. I'm going to, I have it centered the way I like it, left to right, top to bottom. I'm taping it here just to keep it in place. Then I'm going to go ahead and take off my adhesive and adhere it. Fold it flat. Before we set it down, we're going to make sure we're still straight on both sides and lined up at the top. Okay, so when you're good to go, just place that down and rub it really good. Take our tape off and lift. Okay, so you've got your first waterfall. Now we're going to take the second piece. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. But this time we're going to bump it up against the bottom of the flap here. Okay, see how this has that edge? You're going to want to bump the second one up against the edge of the first one, like so. Okay, but I want to make sure that it's going to be straight. So before I do anything, I am going to drop the top flap and line the two up because the top flap's already adhered. So I'm going to line the second one up to make sure that they're straight, okay? So I want to make sure that these two line up perfectly, one on top of the other. So just kind of scooch it around and make sure that they line up. And then I'm going to tape the second one down underneath the first. Lift the first and remove the tape before I adhere it. Okay, so you're going to fold that back down. Make, you've already glued it in place or have it glued in place with your tape. You can always test it one more time to make sure it's where you want it to be. I'm happy with that and then I adhere it. Now that we have it started, go ahead and do that for all five of the waterfalls. Once you've finished with all five of your waterfall pieces, it should look like this. Just give them all a good rub so that the adhesive is nice and secure. And that finishes up the next step. With step number nine, we're going to go ahead and find the piece that is three and a quarter by five and a half. It has two score lines at the top. You're going to have valley side up. On this piece, you'll put the adhesive above the first score line. Once you do that, it will look like this. And to put everything into perspective, we're going to create this piece that holds your waterfall closed. It will look like this. We'll adhere it 
to the bottom of our folio. So with your valley side up, okay, so your valleys are here, your adhesive is here, you are going to fold the valley side back like so. You're going to take that piece, and you're going to bring in your cover, you're going to lift your flaps, and you're going to center this piece left to right, and you're going to bump it up against the very bottom of your folio. When you've got it the way you want it, you can even drop this down and see if it's centered here to here. Okay, when you have it the way you want it, I add a little bit of removable adhesive so it doesn't scooch. it gets a little slippery. You have that in place. You're going to remove the adhesive. You're going to lift it up, fold it back, double check that it hasn't moved, and rub that in place. Okay, once that is stuck down, you're going to take your purple tape off. You still have one more score line. Okay, it's a valley fold, so you're always going to fold away from the valley fold. Okay, well that's what's going to stop those from doing that. Okay, so once that's finished, it'll look like this. We're going to go on to step 10. We're going to locate the piece of paper that's 4.375 inches across by 10.75 tall. Okay, it's going to have two score lines here. There's a two inch flap at the top we're going to add our adhesive to the very top of that piece. We're going to have the valley folds facing you with the two inch piece at the top. So let's go ahead and add our adhesive here. Once you've added your adhesive, it will look like this. We're going to fold those backwards. We're going to take our scoring tool and we're just going to flatten out that score line to make it nice and smooth. To put this piece in perspective, this flap is going to hold the pages on the right hand side of your folio in place when we're all done. So we're creating this flap. So once we have that first score line scored and flipped backwards, we're going to do the same thing we did over here. We're going to line it up left to right flush with the top of the book. We're going to need our purple tape once it's all lined up. One thing I want to show you is it's going to be longer than the cover itself because we haven't folded this second line. So don't be concerned that it's longer than it should be. Once you fold this, it's going to create the same effect it did here. Okay, so it, it will be longer. That's not a problem. So once you have everything lined up, we're going to flip that forward, take off the adhesive backing, and glue it in place. Double check our spacing before we rub it down. If you know you've got it in place, go ahead and adhere that down. Give it a good rub. Take off your purple tape, and we're going to go ahead and fold the second score line. So this is your mountain. Fold it towards you. And it will create this. That will keep the pages in place on the right hand side of your folio. Step 11 is a repeat of step 9 which created this piece to hold our pages in place. So we're going to go ahead and find the second piece of 3.25 by 5.5 inch closure. We're going to have it valley side up. We're going to add our adhesive. Once you add your adhesive, it'll look like this. Valley side up, we're going to push it backwards. Use your finger or a spoon or your scoring tool to kind of flatten that out. Give it 
Make sure it's nice and flat. We're going to do the same thing we did on this side. We're going to line it up over the top of this piece. We're going to center it left to right and top to bottom. When we have it where we want it, we're going to add some tape to keep it in place. Go ahead and remove the backing to the tape. Gently lift it up. Make sure it's the way you want it before you press it down. Centered left to right, top to bottom. And press. So now you have your bottom piece on. And we're, we have one more fold line here. We're going to fold that upward. And just kind of smooth it down. So now it looks like this. And we're ready for the pages on the right hand side. Now we're going to move on to step 12. And I'm going to have you locate six pieces of paper. Those should be the last six pieces you have in your collection. They're going to be 4.75 inches wide by 8 inches long. We're going to take each piece with the score line to the right, valley side up. We're going to go ahead and adhere some adhesive to the right hand side on this half inch flap over here. So go ahead and prep all of the pieces with your adhesive and then we'll show you what to do next. When you're finished, you'll have your six pieces like this. We're going to take three of them and just set those aside. We're first going to work with the right hand side of our folio. Okay, so like we did the others, we're going to take our adhesive and we're going to fold it backwards. We're going to do that for all three of them. So to put this in perspective, we have, we'll have a book on the right hand side with three pages and we'll have a book on the left hand side with three pages. Okay, so we're going to create the book on the right hand side first with these three pages. And if you noticed, the score line is stacked one on top of the other. All right, if you remember on this one, we kind of staggered them and added them at the bottom of each of the folds. We're not doing that this time. This is where I made my mistake. So I'm, I'm telling you this because do what I say, not what I did, because I messed up my first one. Because I didn't read as close as I should have. I will admit that. This is why we're making the video, so you don't make the same mistakes I did. Okay, so this is what we're gonna make first. We're going to take our first piece your fold is going to be on the right, okay? So there's our adhesive, there's our fold. We're going to line these two up perfectly. While they're still lined up, we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove the adhesive backing. We're going to double check that we didn't move anything left to right, top to bottom. Once we've double checked that nothing moved, we're going to go ahead and we're going to rub one on top of the other. Then we're going to score it so that the fold is still in place, okay? We're gonna take our third piece and we're gonna do the same thing. Line it up, remove our adhesive from the third piece. This whole time, that very first piece still has the adhesive on it, okay? Go ahead and adhere those two pieces. Give it a little flattening, like so. And you have your first booklet with three pages. Grab your other three pages and do the exact same thing. So we still have our adhesive on that top piece of both of them. We're gonna open up our folio. We're gonna take one of our booklets. We're gonna line it up at the edge and we're gonna center it top and bottom. Rub it down so the adhesive sticks. 
and you have your first set of pages in place, like so. Now we're going to take the second set of pages, and we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to add them this time to the left-hand side. Put them in place. Make sure they're lined up top to bottom, left to right. This time I'm going to make sure that these two are lined up so that they're lined up at the top and the bottom here so that they don't look funky. So we've got it top to bottom lined up and we've got it right on the edge on the left. We're going to lift the pages on the right hand side. Get those out of the way. I'm going to place our adhesive again. This is kind of thick, so you might want two pieces of adhesive on this side. So nothing moves. And we're going to go ahead, make sure it's in place, and rub it down. So now you have both of your booklets adhered to the folio. In step 16, we're going to go ahead and fold the right hand of the book towards the left, like so, and like this. We're going to bring the top down, this long piece to the bottom, and then we're going to fold the bottom piece up. So your folio is done, and it looks like this. We only have one piece left to finish the folio three. And if you recall, at the very beginning, I said, set your magnets aside so that we don't lose them. So go ahead and locate your magnets. There are four. Doesn't look like four, but there are four very thin magnets. You're going to kind of shift them apart, like so. And you're going to take two. And you're going to kind of decide where you want your magnet pieces. And I kind of want mine centered on this sheet. So I kind of want mine centered maybe right about there. Make sure that my flap is even. And I'm going to make a little pencil mark where I think I want my magnets. So it's going to be right I want to add my magnets right there. I personally like a strong adhesive. You can use a super strong glue dot or wet glue. I personally like a wet glue. You can also use a glue dot, a super strong glue dot. I like the Ranger Multimedia Matte Adhesive. It dries clear, it goes on white. I'm just gonna put a little drop of adhesive on my pencil line. And with the two still stuck together, okay, both of them are still stuck together, I'm just going to place my magnets on top of the glue dot. Then I'm going to go ahead, and, and if there's anything that squishes out, it'll dry clear, but you can always wipe it if that if you think that's going to bother you. You don't want so much glue that it's going to ooze out and glue the top and the bottom pieces together, but you want enough to keep it secure. So I tend to kind of just take my finger if I think it's too much and just kind of smoosh it around. So then I want to add the top piece, like so. But it takes a few minutes for it to adhere. So I'm just going to put one of my punches on top of it to keep it in place until it is completely dry. Now we're going to go ahead and do the second one. I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to make sure this is in place and we're going to kind of decide, I kind of keep it more towards the top up here of the flap. So I put my flap down, I kind of want it in this area. So I'm going to lift up my piece. Mm. I kind of put it right about there. Okay, make sure that it's where I want it. I'm going to do the same thing. Add some glue. You don't need a ton because it's really strong glue. 
lay your magnets over the top, make sure they're covered, okay? Add a little bit more adhesive to the top of the magnets. And put something heavy on them until they're dry. While our finished project is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and show you my mock-up version that's all completed. And it also has measurements of each of the pieces that I want to decorate. You may or may not want to decorate all the same pieces, but if you have a place to start, it's always helpful. If you want to put a piece of paper on the front cover with a little bit of a white edge, your piece will be four and three eighths across by eight and a quarter long. That covers your front, it covers your back, and then if you want to do the spine, the spine measurements are one and a half by eight and a quarter. And that'll give you just a little bit of an edge that'll have a little bit of white showing. The inside of the spine would be a little bit shorter. It's going to be one and three eighths inches across by eight and one eighth inch tall. And the reason it's going to be a little bit less is because we added that inside panel to the front cover. Okay, so it'll be a little bit smaller. If you want to decorate the two pieces here, both of those pieces are three and one eighth inch across by four and one eighth inch tall. That's the same measurement for the inside. And I always put my magnets on first and then decorate, so you don't see the magnets after you decorate. If you want to decorate the pages in the waterfall on the left, those will be four and one eighth inches wide by six and one eighth inches tall. So it's the same for the front as well as the back and all of the pages. Now, if by chance you want to decorate this piece, this would be four and a quarter 